Welcome to Both Aunt Vivs. Today we're counting down our favorite Atlanta moments inspired by real life. If you're new to the channel, we are your source for Black film and TV content. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Number 10, Chris Evans at the Mall. Season four, Crank That Killer. During the Crank That Killer episode, Paperboy finds himself at the mall attempting to go incognito with dark shades and a logoless hat. He orders a pretzel and the girl working the stand immediately recognizes him. When he asks her how she knew it was him, she replies that only famous people dress like he's dressed when they're trying to blend in. She then points behind Al and says, see, that's Chris Evans. The camera cuts to a shot of a white man wearing a similarly basic hat and kicking game to three girls in the mall. In real life, this is a reference to the viral clip of Chris Evans seemingly getting the digits from two girls while waiting for his car at a valet stand. Variety asked writer and producer Stephen Glover whether the show actually tried to get Evans for a cameo, to which he replied, we didn't try to get Chris Evans, we just think he's funny. Thanks to the internet, Chris Evans himself saw the article on Twitter and replied, why not? So clearly, Atlanta's writer's room missed a prime cameo opportunity. Number nine, Club Fight, season one, The Club. At the end of the club episode, after Al assaults the club promoter for trying to short them, Al and Ern are outside the club when Ern looks off towards some off-camera action and says, oh, this, is good, man. this moment is a reference to a real thing Chris Brown said almost verbatim on stage in a club right before a gunfight broke out. However, it's not clear if anyone at the club made their getaway in an invisible car. Atlanta wasn't the only show to parody Chris Brown's mistake. Insecure recreated the moment in their second episode of season three, Familiar Like. Oh, these niggas getting it in. Number eight, Photo with Cops, season one, Streets on Lock. In the second episode of season one, Al is released from prison after the shooting incident. And as he and Darius are walking out of the station, an excited cop comes up to that paper man asking for a photo. Al reluctantly obliges and poses for the photo with the officer. One more for the instant slots, one more for the instant, back to back. Come on man, back to back. Nice. This is a reference to a 2013 incident where Two Chains was arrested for marijuana possession in Maryland, and the two cops asked him for a photo. Chains later posted the pic on Instagram with the caption, lock me up, and then wanted pictures, SMH. Number seven, Three Slaps, season four, Three Slaps. The title of season four's Three Slaps comes from a moment of punishment at the beginning of the episode. Laquarius's mom and grandfather have been called to the school because Laquarius was dancing on his desk during class. There's a moment in the hallway when his granddad, as punishment for his behavior, gives him three consecutive slaps across the face. This is inspired from a real life viral video of a grandfather dressed similarly to the character in the show, giving three similar slaps to a young boy in a school hallway. Number six, dancing on the table. Robin season, sport and waves. Al and Ern are visiting a predominantly white music streaming company to pitch Paperboy's new track. For a quick moment, Al and Ern are seen talking to each other about the company's vibe while watching a rapper dancing on top of a table for a rather reserved crowd of employees in a closed door meeting. This is a reference to a video of Bobby Shmurda before he was locked up, dancing on a table during a meeting with Epic Records. Number five. White Tears, Robin Season, Moneyback Shorty. The opening scene of Moneyback Shorty features an Instagram video of an exasperated white woman crying while reading Paperboy lyrics to her followers. She's particularly upset that a song like Paperboy's would play on the radio station that her daughter is listening to. Said no to college, cause it's no fun. Mo drugs and mo guns. But I still might have to slap a trick. Shout out Colin Kaepernick. The woman crying over rap lyrics is a parody of a 2016 video where a white Christian mom has a meltdown over the lyrics in a Vince Staples song, North North. Surprisingly, Vince Staples comes to the defense of the distraught woman after social media went in on her overreaction. Number four, Dance Punishment. Season three, Three Slaps. 
Three Slaps is back on the list and not for the last time. First, we discuss the viral clip that gives the episode its name. But this time, we're talking about the mom's form of discipline. While standing in the hallway scolding Laquarius, his mom forces him to perform the same dances he disrupt class with. At one point, she even demands he do the worm, but the guidance counselor steps in before that happens. This was taken from a real life video of a little boy whose mom made him do Fortnite dances as punishment for also dancing and not listening to his teacher in class. Obviously, this is humiliating for the kids, <laughs> but damn, wouldn't it have been great if your mom's idea of punishment had been do the Tootsie Roll? Number three, acoustic rap cover. Robin season, Sportin' Waves. In Sportin' Waves, Al is on the search for a new plug after his connect robs him due to the success of his latest single. When Darius and Al visit potential replacements, one of them tells him that his girlfriend is a big fan of his and texts him a YouTube link of her singing an acoustic cover of Paperboy's song. Paperboy, Paperboy, I'm about that Paperboy. If you wait on your guard, then you flex and use a hater boy. Paperboy, what the hell? Paperboy. The acoustic cover of Paperboy's rap is a play on the same real life online trend. Atlanta writer Jamal Alori told Variety, we've had a running joke for years about popular songs that were initially trap and extremely gutta and they get really mainstream. He later talks about the 2012 viral cover of Chief Keef's Love Sosa by Nikki Heaton. She's talking about guns and drugs, says Alori, but it's something she knows nothing about or even cares about. Fucking with them robots, you gon' get fucked over. Got reason robots, these hoes love Chief Sosa. Number two, Tyler Perry, season four, Work Ethic. In Work Ethic, Van and Lottie visit Mr. Chocolate Studios, which is a parody of the 330-acre film production studio in Atlanta called Tyler Perry Studios, run by, you guessed it, Tyler Perry. The episode gets its name, Work Ethic, from a Tyler Perry tweet in which he uses the term to boast that he doesn't use a writer's room and instead writes all his scripts himself. If you have seen this episode, you can safely assume how the Atlanta writer's room feels towards Perry's tweet and his work in general. Before we reveal number one, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Laquarius slash Devante Hart, season four, Three Slaps. For the third time, the season three premiere, Three Slaps, hits our list. But this reference isn't comedic like the previous entries. We have this at number one because outside of any individual jokes, the story of Laquarius follows the real-life tragedy of Devante Hart. In 2018, Devante's adoptive mother, Jennifer Hart, drunkenly drove off a cliff with her wife, Sarah Hart, and her six adopted children in the car. It was later discovered that Jennifer and Sarah intended to kill themselves and their kids. Further investigation revealed an extremely abusive household with neighbors reporting seeing the children malnourished. You may remember Devante Hart from a viral 2014 photo in which he is seen tearfully hugging a police officer at a protest. This moment is also depicted in the episode. However, it's reimagined as Laquarius attempting to run away from his abusive adoptive mothers. Of course, the largest deviation from the original story is that Laquarius and his siblings are able to survive by escaping the car seconds before it hurls off the cliff. Tragically, Devante Hart and his siblings were not as fortunate in real life. 